Greetings and welcome to the Transform Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Anastasio. It is Friday, July 15th, 2022, and this is episode 75. Uh, and welcome back, guys. Uh, we published uh, earlier in the week, uh, it's on Wednesday the 13th, a uh, previous episode that I encourage you guys to check out. Um, it was a little bit of a self-indulgent episode for me because it was all about focusing on my favorite article, favorite blog article that I've uh, ever read by Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, my, my idol slash um, virtual mentor uh, that he's not even aware of. Um, so if you guys get a chance, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a quirky episode in that I'm not sure it really applies to most people. Um, I think it's just sort of on an individual basis. If you're, if you're into his messaging, you might find the, the episode engaging. Or if you're just looking for ways to squeeze more productivity out of the day, if you're a you know, a, a multifaceted uh, small business owner who wears many hats. You may, uh, you may also find some really good stuff in that episode as far as uh, squeezing out, you know, almost second by second uh, productivity throughout the day. So uh, definitely encourage you guys to check that out if you get a chance, like I said, or if you're just a fan of Gary Vee, you might find it uh, a novelty uh, that, that I went through that article. Um, so today, episode 75, uh, I wanted to come back to something about Twitter uh, that, that occurred to me, I think it was like last week or the week before, um, and I think it was an outgrowth of a discussion on Twitter, either I think it involved like Elon Musk or his takeover or, or Jack Dorsey was weighing in on it or something. I, I don't know. It was something around that conversation that this got mentioned, this feature that I want to point out to you guys today. This feature got mentioned, uh, and it reminded me like, hey, I've never talked about that on the podcast. I think you know our audience would, would do well to kind of take note uh, of this um, of this feature on on Twitter, if you are on Twitter, if you're thinking about getting on Twitter, so before I get to that, guys, let's start there. Uh, why should you be on Twitter? What would Twitter do for you uh, if you were on that platform? And so, as I usually start with, it's not a given that you should or shouldn't be on Twitter or on any platform in particular. There's sort of this idealistic level that you that you maybe are always striving for, which is to be on every single channel imaginable. Right, that you're on, you know, you're on Facebook, you're on LinkedIn, you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, you're on TikTok, you're on Twitch, you're on, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously, if you can do it, if you can get there, that's the best outcome. Uh, of, I mean, assuming you're doing it right, because you're going to blanket every possible corner of the internet and where where traffic and attention could come from. But that's an ideal, and you're not going to start there on day one. In fact, on day one, you're probably going to focus on one, maybe two platforms, assuming they might be sort of related to each other, for example, Facebook and LinkedIn, uh, where you can kind of generally replicate content very easily. Um, But you'll probably start on one or two sort of nexus platforms that are going sort of hand in hand with, let's say, your website, and then you may grow out channel-wise over time. So that's maybe sort of a typical progression you you would go through. Now, in that progression, assuming you have gotten to Twitter, or you were on Twitter in the first place, or you're about to get on Twitter, the reason that Twitter sort of stands apart in a way from the other platforms isn't because it's necessarily better for reach or engagement or anything like that. In fact, uh, I think I think it's actually very difficult at times to get pure engagement on Twitter, but uh, depending on how active you, you can afford to be there. But what what's interesting about Twitter is unlike any of the other platforms, it is a listening first platform, meaning you are because of the nature of what's coming out on that platform. It's it's just you know you know one burst of, of thought after another in a, in a long timeline where you're just sort of consuming, you know, this stream of thinking from from the audience at large out there. Um, because of that, it sort of puts you automatically into a mode where you're where you're consuming inputs and then formulating output versus a lot of the other platforms where you're publishing and then listening. You're posting to Facebook and then checking comments. You're posting to Instagram and then checking the comment section. You're you're posting to TikTok and then you're checking the the comment section. On Twitter, there's no comment section necessarily to go check on. I mean, obviously, if you post something, there's potentially comments in there. But when you go into the platform, you're more so in a disposition where you're, you're just sort of being fed this big, steady stream of tweets, and you can just sort of quickly tap in and listen to those and then get around to formulating a response and an input and stuff like that. That's how I like to kind of view that platform. There are people who might disagree with that, 
But I think just by its nature, it's, of course, not, you know, it's not any policy related thing. It's not like a headline at the top that's telling you to listen first and post later. I mean, you could technically go on Twitter and just fire off a bunch of tweets and leave. But what I mean is it's at its most effective. It's at its most optimum, its most optimal state when you go in listening first and then start composing tweets and then start responding to uh, what people are saying. So it just sort of lends itself to that. And I think because of that, there are a few instances where I would tell somebody, hey, look, you don't belong on Twitter at all. What I would say is the real question is, should you be actively posting on Twitter or just listening for the most part on Twitter? That's really the question, not necessarily do you belong there or not, at least in my opinion. So, so when you, you know, if you're already on Twitter or you're going to go to Twitter, that's how you go into it, in, in my estimation, is you go in thinking, okay, where's my audience out here? What are they talking about? What questions are they asking? What are they saying about either my product or the type of product I have or the industry that I'm in or the service business that I'm in? And who can I help? I mean, who can I bring value to? Who can I, you know, illuminate some, some issue for or, or you know, some, some question that's nagging them and I can kind of put it to bed uh, for them? So that's what I really see as the best use of your time on Twitter is, you know, when, when you're kind of in that zone where you're like, okay, what's my audience saying? What's my audience thinking? What's my customer base, my potential clients struggling with? Twitter is a great place to start and really comb through there and see what's going on out there and be like, okay, you know, this is where, uh, you know, this is where I can, I can uh, lend some, some help and support and I can just lead with value. And if anybody's interested, they're going to click back through to my profile and see that I do this stuff. And I've got a little bio there that's going to substantiate that. You know, then maybe every once in a while I'll throw that right hook and just, you know, do a call to action like, hey, if you want more help, go check out my link in bio and, and you know, sign me up for a free consultation, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, but many more tweets than not should be leading with value versus throwing those, those, those calls to action out there. Okay, so having laid that groundwork, and by the way, guys, before I transition over to today's, the meat of today's episode, we have talked a little bit about Twitter, you know, not nearly as much as some of the other platforms uh, on this podcast, but, we, but if you want to check out episodes 29, uh, 35, 46, you'll, you'll get some, some feedback uh, in there about Twitter from us, uh, you know, whether it's how you can use Twitter to, to, to sort of tee up your podcast or, you know, use Twitter to, to, to do effective listening like I just kind of described uh, and stuff like that. But th- those are three you can check out, 29, 35, and 46. But, you know, for, for the sake of this episode, the main thing I just wanted to kind of point out to you guys, and we don't have to spend a lot of time on it, um, but there is a feature on Twitter that is very often overlooked. And it came up in this discussion, like I said, about you know, Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey, I think were somehow talking about Twitter and this came up or something like that. But they mentioned the feature advanced search. Okay, advanced search. And actually, Gary Vee has talked about this. I've seen other guys... Uh, out there in this space, you know, talk about this feature at times. Um, and, and so advanced search, when you go into uh, the Twitter desktop, you know, if you open up Twitter on your desktop and just put in, or, or Google, you know, Twitter advanced search, you can just go straight in there. And you can start searching at a very granular level um, a variety of things on, on um, your variety of ways, excuse me, a variety of ways to search what people are talking about. And it's a very refined set of search uh, parameters. And just to kind of tick them off for you, you can obviously put in search keywords. That's the obvious one. You can put in exact phrases. Uh, you can put in, you know, both all the words you're looking for and any of the words you're looking for. So you can, you can kind of go looser with it by putting in an any search instead of an all search. Uh, you can have none of these words. You can have, a, hey, you know, the phrase should not contain certain words and exclude those. Uh, you can list hashtags. You can choose any language. Okay, so that's just all in the word searching. That's, that's all the things you can do with the word searching. Now, from an account perspective, you can list accounts you're looking for. You can, you can look for accounts that are being tweeted at. Like, like, in other words, tweets are being sent to that account. Uh, and then you can also do ones where those, those accounts are being mentioned. Okay, so not just, you know, where they were, they, where the tweet was sent to, uh, that, that account where they're listed first in the tweet, but really if they're mentioned anywhere in the tweet, you can also look for that as well. And, and then finally, 
or I should say, uh, and then there's a filter section. Uh, you can include replies and original tweets. You can shut replies off. You can say, I only want to see replies. You can look for links, like does the tweet have a link in it? Uh, or don't show me any links, or only show me tweets with links in it, and, and don't show me any that don't have links in it. So you can go down to that level of granularity. Uh, from an engagement perspective, you can actually say, I need to see a minimum number of replies, right? I, I only want to see tweets that have at least this many replies, or I want to see tweets that have at least this many likes, or at least this many retweets. So those three buttons at the bottom that you know people are prone to hit on tweets, you know, reply, like, retweet, uh, you, can, you can set minimum parameters on those. Okay, um, and then you have a date function. Uh, you can say I want to search from a certain date to a certain date, and you can isolate a range by doing that. Okay, so it's a really, really powerful. I and mean, that's really the, the, all there is to it, guys. I mean, it really wasn't much more I wanted to, to mention to you in this episode, but I wanted to sort of highlight this on top of the listening aspect of Twitter, which I believe, if I remember correctly, guys, I think episode twenty nine. Uh, is where you would see, or where you would get to listen to, um, you know, some some of the top level strategy stuff on Twitter. Uh, yeah, episode twenty nine. Let's talk about Twitter. Published on January twentieth of this year. Uh, you, you'll kind of hear, you know, similar to what I said at the beginning of this episode about listening. But this advanced search feature, uh, which I really should have mentioned in that episode, um, takes things to a whole other level. It's just a totally different ball game when you go into advanced search. I think you guys will find that once you use advanced search and you really kind of dive into some of the things you can possibly come up with there, um, it's going to be like, wow, that's okay. I did not realize how deep I can actually go into my audience's conversations and really get a sense of what's being talked about and what's, you know, what's being asked and, you know, where the the question marks might be for them and things of that nature. Um, Or just keeping your pulse on the, on the industry, you know, just seeing, you know, what are some of the major accounts saying and, And things of that nature. There's a lot of different ways to use advanced search. I think the primary way is to listen to your audience's concerns and questions, but there's other ways you can use it. And there's other ways you can kind of comb through all this this, uh, conversation and this this noise, to be honest with you, on Twitter and get down to uh, the things that matter to you and to your business on Twitter. And and like I said, I think advanced search really gives you that, that capability. So Check that out when you get a chance, guys. I mean, you literally can open up Google and just type in, you know, advanced search on Twitter or Twitter advanced search, and it's going to bring up a page, a Twitter page with, um, uh, with the advanced search on it. And you don't have to have, you, you don't have to have an account to do it. Uh, you can, I mean, I'm, I'm literally doing this real time. Uh, you can literally just go to that main page and just type in keywords and type in accounts and start searching, even if you don't have a Twitter account yourself. Uh, so, so it doesn't even really engender you being on the platform. Although I think if you're going to use advanced search and you're really going to get the most out of it, you want to be on the platform so you can actually be in there and engage with these individuals. Whereas if you don't have an account, all you're really getting is this top level information that you have to make actionable some other way. Okay. So anyway, that's really all I have for you guys uh, today. Hope everybody had a great week. Hope everybody had a great Friday headed into the weekend uh, as we're now halfway through July. Um, And we will be back next week with episodes 76 and 77. That'll be the week of, let's see, Monday the 18th. Uh, So looking forward to linking back up with you guys then. Check us out on Facebook and LinkedIn and Pransform, pransform pransform.com and the website. And, of course, you can uh, subscribe to our podcast here. Thanks again for listening, guys. Super appreciate your time and attention. Uh, And we will be back in touch with you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.